All right, listen up. Today we're going to go over this uh, play tectonics review. Uh, just giving you the information that you need to correctly fill in your uh, review sheets to check answers. Make sure that you have the correct answers. Uh, please don't just fill it in. Actually work them out and then look back over this video. The first one asks, what is a, a convergent plate boundary? So what we're basically doing is we're showing with arrows the direction that the plates move. With convergent plate boundaries, they're going to move into each other. All right, so it looks like that, just two arrows going into each other. What they form are mountains, hills, and even sometimes volcanoes. Another word to describe the convergent plate boundary is uh, colliding or coming together. For divergent plate boundaries, what we're going to show is two arrows going apart because divergent plate boundaries are boundaries that are separating. So we're going to draw two arrows going in opposite directions. Divergent plate boundaries tend to form uh, seafloor spreading. Remember that thing I told you about that cut you get on your arm when the blood seeps out? Same thing is happening on the ocean floor with the plates. That mount is wearing away at the plate, causes their split at the bottom of the ocean. And then you get the magma coming up. As a result of seafloor spreading, we get our mid-ocean ridges. That's the scab on your cut when it forms. Mid-ocean ridges. And another name for mid-ocean ridges is underwater volcanoes. Another word to describe divergent boundaries would be a uh, divide. Or move apart. Alright, the next one we have is transform boundaries. That's when we have two plates that are sliding past one another. So I can either draw one arrow going up and the other one going down, or I can draw one arrow going to the right and the other going to the left. It's your choice. Your transform boundaries tend to form your earthquakes. Another word to describe them, uh, transform boundaries, are uh, fault lines. Or also, uh, you could put sliding. Subduction boundaries are my favorite. They're the most interesting to me. Because you have that ocean plate that's more dense than the continental plate. So as they converge into each other, that ocean plate is going to subduct or go underneath the uh, land plate because the ocean plate is more dense. All right, so you're, they form your uh, volcanoes. My son came in here, so I lost my train of thought for a second. They also form your trenches. Remember, the trenches form directly above the subduction zone. Another word uh, for subduction is going underneath.
All right, moving on down. They want you to explain uh, potential and kinetic energy at fault lines in earthquakes. So I'll basically just tell you what's going on here. When it says explain potential and kinetic energy, it's where I told you you were pressing your hands together. So you're pressing your hands together as hard as you can, trying to get them to move. That's potential energy building up. That's what the fault line is doing. They're pressing against each other, uh, building up that potential energy, that stored energy, until it gets enough to get a little slip and release. Once it slips and releases, it's in motion, so that's known as kinetic energy. That kinetic energy triggers your earthquakes. All right? So that's explaining potential and kinetic energy of fault lines and earthquakes. How are the Hawaiian Islands formed? They're formed over hot spots. That's where your plates are going over a very, very hot spot of uh, magma. And uh, as the plate goes over it, it's causing islands to form. All right? So that's how your Hawaiian Islands form. Now, the key the trick about that is, though, after that island passes over the plate, it starts to weather away because it's no longer being created. It's no longer over the uh, hot spot. So it starts to weather as the plate passes over, uh, any part of the plate that's over it is forming a new island. Any plate that's past it is starting to weather away. So the answer is how they form. It was hot spots. Hot spots. Moving over here to the other side. The continents were once thought to be one supercontinent. This was known as Pangaea. The theory of plate tectonics, scientists were able to uh, hypothesize the plates were one giant landmass. By what evidence? All right, the evidence that was presented was uh, fossils. Uh, the continents fit like a puzzle. And it asked you the uh, the name of that, by the way, was uh, continental drift. The theory of continental drift. Also, uh, they found plant remains, which is another form of fossils, on uh, countries that they believe were once linked because the fossils that they found no way the plants could grow there in the climate that that uh, continent has traveled to nowadays. Number three says the San Andreas fault line is an example of what type of plate boundary? Uh, that would be transform boundary. You're sliding past each other. Explain how and what occurs when there is tension at fault lines. Like I said, your uh, potential energy is building up, building up, building up the tension. And all of a sudden it releases. When it releases in kinetic energy, you get your earthquakes. Number four says the ring of fire is found at what uh, plate? The Pacific plate. That's what you should have put. Number five. Mid-ocean ridges are caused by divergent plates. Because they're separating. An underwater volcano is formed. Known as a mid ocean ridge. Number six. What is formed at the mouth of a river as the river meets a large body of water, such as an ocean? Alright, you have your deltas being formed. The reason your deltas are formed is because your uh, ocean water is known as stationary. So when you have a river that's moving, meeting a stationary thing, it has to drop off that deposit somewhere. So you get a buildup of dirt uh, from the eroding rocks at that location. And we call that a delta. Number seven, the breakdown of rock is weathering. Weathering. And the movement of rock is erosion. Number eight is a density question. If a rock has a mass of 202.5 grams and uh, it's 15 centimeters, what is the density of the rock? I always remember DMV. 
which means density equals mass divided by volume. So you divide your mass by your volume. 202.5 divided by 15. And you'll get 13.5 when you divide that up. 13.5. I use my calculator because I'm in a little bit of a rush. This is part one of your plate tectonics review. I'll be back in a second with part two.